Hey, this is Joe from Personas. Today I'm going to show you how to use FetComp inside of Studio One. First things first, how do you find it? Well, if you press F7 on your keyboard when you have a session open, uh, look for a plugin called Fat Channel. That's what we're looking for. So the way this works, if I drag this onto this drum bus, you'll see there is there are basically three sections to this Fat Channel. If we click up here, we can go down to just one, but this section is the compressor section, this section is the EQ section. And depending on what version of Studio One you have, you might have three or as many as a dozen or so options under each of these. So FET Comp right here is one of the compressor models inside of FAT Channel. So you can mix and match EQs and compressors to your heart's content uh, inside of FAT Channel, but you won't find FET Comp or uh, tube comp or any of those in the plugin list over there on the left hand side of the window uh, when you press F7 they're actually kind of nestled inside of Fat Channel. So Fat Channel is one of my go-to plugins I use it all the time and in this particular session we're gonna listen to uh, Fat Comp on a drum bus and I'll show you kind of the different ways that I like to set that up but first let me let you hear what the raw tracks sound like these are some drums recorded in this room a couple of EQs just to kind of take care of some ringing that was happening but otherwise this is just the straight drums that was all recorded by the way through Persona Studio Live console um, Man, that sounded good that day. Uh, it was a giant, like 24 inch kick drum, massive. Uh, and that snare is so thick. Okay, so um, what I wanna show you is Fat Channel and the Fat Comp on that drum bus. So we have Fat Channel here. A couple of things you need to know. Uh, there's a couple different views for Fat Channel. This button right here allows you to turn on and off stacked mode. So if you just wanna see each individual piece of Fat Channel, you can. Uh, or you can see all three. I typically have all three because I'm usually using EQ and compressor. I don't use the gate almost ever, but there is a high pass filter here that I do sometimes use. Now you can swap the order by clicking this button. So EQ can come first and then compressor or compressor and EQ. I tend to start this way and if I need to, I'll go this way. Um, those are the basics. Now, one piece of advice, if you're new to Studio One uh, and you find yourself needing to look things up in the manual because you forgot how this particular thing works, I totally get that. I'm learning a new piece of software, not in the audio world myself, and I'm constantly having to look things up. We make that really easy in Studio One. I wish all software did this. So I'm inside of Fat Channel, correct? If I just press F1 on the keyboard, check out what happens. Studio One opens the manual, and instead of just opening a PDF, it actually is an interactive, sort of intuitive manual. So I can resize this wherever I want, and it opens the manual for me. But not only does it do that, it takes me to the exact section for this whatever I'm in. So I was in Fat Channel, so it took me to the Fat Channel section of the manual. So now I can scroll and I can read about stacked mode that I just told you about, about the different compressors. We can learn that the FET Comp is model of one of the most famous or most used vintage FET based compressors. That's just a type of circuit. In case you didn't know, like there's tube circuits and there's solid state circuits and FET is like a type of solid state circuit, I think. I'm not an electric electronic person, but um, it's just a different circuit that has a cool sound to it. Um, different from a tube circuit, if that makes sense. Uh, this is great for adding an aggressive edge and accentuating room sound for drums, guitar, and other highly transient signals. So there's a little information there. Uh, and you can keep going down and you learn basically, I mean, if you're learning Studio One, I'm not going to tell you to read the entire manual because who reads the entire manual? But if there are certain sections you want to learn about, like today you want to make sure you understand how fat, uh, fat channel works. Just open Fat Channel and press F1 and read through it. It's, it's a quick read. Um, it gives you kind of all the things you need to know, and then obviously you can dive in deeper. We, we have tons of videos on our channel to help you with specific features and things like that, but this manual has been a labor of, of love here at Personas, um, and I love that it's interactive here. There's a PDF version, too, you can find somewhere, but uh, the fact that it comes inside is of the, the software itself and takes you to where you want to go is pretty crazy. So if I, like, click on a... Uh, if I double click on an event and it brings up this window, which is the editor window, and I say, what in the world is this window? I just press F1 and it says, oh, you're in the song page. And then it starts to show me the song page workflow. So this is a more general view of the actual song page itself, but I can always get to 
the editing section by just kind of going down and saying, okay, what about the editor? So that was a bad example because it didn't take me to the actual editing section, but you get the idea. It's very, very handy, especially for remembering how plugins work. Open the plugin, press F1, and voila, whoops, and voila, you're good to go. Okay, so here is, we're going to talk about FET comp. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this view so we just see the FET compressor. That's going to make our life a little bit easier. So real quickly, um, the I personally have only used the hardware version of this a handful of times. So if you want to get real tweaky about does it sound exactly like the original and does it do all that, I don't know because I like the way this sounds and it's cool um, and I like the way it functions. So for me, plugins kind of have two modes for me. One is does it sound cool? What sound does it impart? And then two, is it easy to use and does it function in a way that's helpful for me? So I will not use entire plugins because I just don't like the way they're laid out or the way they function, even if they might sound okay. And your question might be, why would I ever use FET comp over just the standard compressor or the compressor plugin in Studio One, just the regular compressor? Well, there's different uses for each. For me, a compressor like this, like a stock compressor, is for generally for more like utilitarian, let me just control the peaks kind of a situation. The vocal has a certain, he keeps every word, he sings a certain word at the beginning of every chorus that's just 10 times louder than everything else. I'd like that to be just smacked down and then kind of leave everything else alone. That's a, one example of how I'll use the compressor. Um, but the FET comp has a different sound to it. The, if I could give you words to describe it to me, it would be aggressive and thick. Like it just has a thickening that it does. You could get the same amount of compression roughly on a stock compressor and it's just going to be a very different sound. It's not right for everything, um, but is another tone in your palette. Uh, but it's also confusing because it's not laid out. If I were to hang on, let me put the regular, the standard compressor on here so you can compare briefly. Uh, standard compressor is if you're learning about compression, like what a compressor does, the standard compressor is is kind of the, the textbook compressor, right? It's where we can talk about threshold, ratio, knee a little bit, attack, release, makeup gain. Like these are the main components of a compressor. We have videos on that. You can learn more. Um, so it's just a very straightforward, this is a compressor and you can see everything that's happening. We can see the inputs. Um, we can see how much compression we're doing, how much gain reduction we're doing. We can see what our inputs and output levels are. Pretty nice, right? Very utilitarian. And I went, honestly, I went years just using this compressor before I started using Fat Channel. This wasn't like I was waiting for Fat Channel to come out. I just didn't use it for whatever reason. Um, call me stubborn. But um, now Fat Channel, and we turn it on and off here. You can tell it's on by that light and the, uh, the VU meter lights up as well. This is just a different animal. It does not have the traditional threshold um, setting. Instead, it has this input setting and the output setting. So you'll spend most of your time adjusting the input and the output. Now, the other settings, obviously, there are, there is a ratio. That's what these buttons are. You can go 4 to 1, 8 to 1, 12 to 1, 20 to 1, or you can do the all buttons in mode, which this was, I don't know if it was a feature or a glitch of the original. There were only four buttons, and if you pushed all four of them in, they would all stick, and you'd get, like, mega compression. Um, I usually stick to 4 to 1 because, it to me, it doesn't get... It's already pretty aggressive at four to one, and it just gets more and more aggressive as you go. And I, I kind of like the aggressiveness there. So I typically leave it there. Here's what's really interesting. So I'd used these, these hardware models in the past, and the attack and release settings would be like zero to 10, something like that. And I never could remember, okay, is zero fast or is zero slow? Uh, and then different models or different brands would do it differently. So what's cool, Studio One, the 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 mind the man behind the curtain whoever designed this put the actual release times in here which you don't get on the original so i can see that all, all the way to the left is 0.8 milliseconds and then all the way to the right is 0 0.02 milliseconds what do you notice about both of those yeah they're both really quick the, the whole thing the whole attack time of this compressor is under a millisecond 0.8 all the way down to 0.02. So that means that we're getting a fast attack no matter how we use it. So if you want a nice slow attack that lets all the transients through and then starts to compress, right? Something with a 50 millisecond attack time, this is not the compressor for you. But if you want to start attacking those transients in a way that kind of changes the tone, which is a very cool thing to do on drums, for example, this is a nice option. It's also great for vocals because sometimes I want the vocal to get grabbed to get grabbed, <laughs> like I'm from Mississippi. I really, I really am from Mississippi. Sorry, Mississippi. I'm from, I'm from you. 
I was just made fun of you. Um, I want it to get grabbed as soon as signal comes through. Now, part of that is a function of the threshold or the input, but a big part of that is the function of how the attack works. So, as you can imagine, there's not a ton of variation between the slowest attack, quote, slow attack, which is 0.8 milliseconds. Just, just to refresh, this is 0.8 milliseconds, not 0.8 seconds. It is 80%, 0.8 of a single millisecond. And then up here is like 2% of a millisecond, which is just bonkers. And then the release, however, is a lot slower. So this is where you can kind of capture a nice, long, smooth release. So it attacks really quickly, and then it lets go up to over a second, which is wild. I typically go on the faster side of the release, too. Interesting point is the fastest release time is 50 milliseconds, which is a lot longer, you know, it's than our sub one millisecond attack time. That's all very interesting. This is just the way, I don't know if it's the way this was designed from the beginning or just the way the circuit ended up working. These were the parameters that you could get for attack and release inside of that particular circuit. I don't know, don't really care, it's not really necessary. Um, over here, the key listen thing, uh, I don't use this almost ever. And the idea here is you can have the compressor only listen to a specific range of frequencies. So, for example, it's not responding to the kick drum as much. It's only responding to the snare. I almost never use it. So this, this is where I live. I turn it on, and I mess with input and output, and then I mess with attack and release. Although attack and release are usually set, and I don't mess with them too, too much. Now, the thing you should know before you dive in, you've probably already dived in. Is that correct, grammar? I dived today. I dove yesterday. I have dived many times. Oh, boy. Hold, please. This is the problem with being a curious person. I can't let it go. Dived. Yeah. I have dived. Did you know I have dived off the diving board? Anyway, sorry. I apologize. Sorry. Okay, so you've probably dived into, I forgot what I was saying, dived into uh, FET comp already, and you might have made this mistake where you turn it on, and kaboom, you thought you blew your speakers because you had this thing all the way up. So the way this works, both of these turned up, technically increase volume. The input increases the volume going into the compressor, which essentially creates more compression. The output decreases the output of the compressor. So typically, I kind of have an inverse relationship with these, meaning the more I turn this up, the more I turn this down. Because even though this is causing more compression, which makes you think, oh, it'll be quieter, it's louder. So this compressor works in a way of the output the input is pushing the signal into the compressor more and more and more. Kind of like turning the threshold down, but not exactly, because we could turn the threshold down. For example, we can't hear this right now, but if I turn this on and I set things up at kind of normal, if I say, let's look at the output level here. See how it's hovering around a little under minus 24? If I bring the threshold down and it starts compressing like a maniac, and we increase the attack, make the attack really fast too. Look at the level. The output level of this is much significantly quieter, like 12 dB quieter or more. The input hasn't changed. We've just said, here's what the compressor is going to listen to. This is the level at which the compressor is going to work. And now the output is affected, which is why most compressors have some sort of makeup gain where we make up for the volume that we lost so we can hear what the compression is actually doing to the sound. That's all well and good. That's just not how this one works. You don't get threshold, you just get input. And the threshold is kind of under the hood somewhere. There's not even really a threshold. So as you increase this, you're pushing up that volume going into the compressor, which will increase the amount of compression, but it will also increase the output because it's the overall volume is being increased. That's why we have the output volume to turn that back down. Now, you don't have to be super scientific about it. Don't say, okay, I will increase the input volume by 15 decibels, um, and I will decrease the output volume by the precisely the same amount. Uh, first of all, it's all set to minus zero, like negative numbers, so you, the math would even be difficult. But generally speaking, if I push this up past 12 o'clock, I'm going to pull this down past 12. It's not a scientific thing. It's just a general feel thing. But I do try to make it to where I'm not getting... I don't, when I turn the compressor on and off, I don't have a massive change in volume. It, it, that's the only thing I don't want. I want it to maintain relative volume so that if I turn it on and off, I can see, am I helping this or am I hurting this? Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So now, now that we kind of know the overall workings of this, what does this thing sound like? So what I'm going to do is I would encourage you, let's show you what my default setting is for this. It's been so long since I first used Studio One for like the very first time, so I don't remember what the default settings were. Um, let's look at it. 
but my default is set like this. The input is minus 43, the output is all the way up. Um, I, I think I set that intentionally because that, when I turn it on and off, that shouldn't blow our ears away. So I'm gonna hit play and then turn this on and we should be okay. Okay, yeah, that's nice. The, if you if your preset, if your default is like this, sucker's gonna blow you up when you turn it on. So to avoid that, just set this, set it just like I have it, minus 40-ish, was it minus 43? This one can be all the way up, that's fine. However you wanna set it. And then come up here to this little button right there, click on that and choose store as default preset. This will save into the Studio One folder. And then every time you open this, this actually is the default for the whole fat channel, but it'll keep this particular setting. I do that for most, the plugins I use all the time, I have default settings that I like, so I change it to what I like, and then that's my default moving forward. So let's start listening to this. So I'm gonna hit play with the compressor on, and it wasn't, even though the volume wasn't changing, it wasn't really doing much to the sound. We could see the needle wasn't really jumping. So as I turn it up, I'm gonna be turning it up a little bit, and then I'm gonna be turning this down. I'm gonna do this dance. So I can get more compression, but tame that volume because it's probably gonna be too much. All right, let's do that. One technique you might see me do is I'll pull the output way down, crank the input till I get a decent amount of compression, like five to 10 dB of gain reduction or something as just a starting point, just get the needle moving. Then I'll bring the output volume back up to kind of put it where I want it to be. Okay, so that's a nice light amount of compression. It's not going nuts, so um, we could make the attack, the release time as fast as we want to get that needle back to zero faster, which for me allows me to add a little more compression. Yeah, that needle's going back quicker, which means I can crank this up a little bit more because I typically want the needle to go back between hits. Like between kick and snare, it'd be nice if that needle went back to zero. So I know I'm actually compressing it and I'm not just constantly chronically turning it down. As you can hear, it's doing a lot of things. It's making the cymbals really washy. That's a part of when you just put it on the entire drum bus. But it's also making the kick and the snare super thick. Listen to that again. That snare kind of has a whack, 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 whack. Instead of thump, it's more of a whack uh, because it's getting hit by that compressor. Now let's mess with these and see if we get even more compression as we click up the ratio buttons. See, I really don't think those come into play until you get really aggressive with it. Even with that amount of compression, it, it's the cymbals are kind of a mess now, but even with that amount of compression, it's hard to make this thing sound bad because now the drum, it's just, it's, it's not right for every type of song, but that drum beat is just, pumping all day long, we could deal with that some other way. But just as an idea, that is a way to get a really aggressive in your face drum tone, especially for kick and snare, which is one compressor on the drum bus. All right, so that is the overview of how this compressor works. Now you just need to mess with it. Use it on a bunch of stuff, decide which versions you like, which ones you don't like, make a mental note of that, make an actual note of that, and then you can move on to other compressors here to learn. But I would encourage you to always work on this in context of an actual project. Instead of like spending the next year learning all of these and then starting to work on music, just learn them as you work. So do a song and decide, I'm gonna use Fet Comp as my compressor when I need compression as much as possible. That way I'll learn it and I'll learn how it sounds on a bunch of different tracks and then on the next song, maybe I'll do that again with a different plugin. That's what I would do versus just sitting down and reading the manual for a year. Make sense? All right, cool. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you. I'll see you in the next one.